there was a um, campaign some time back that was called My Dress, My Choice. Why do we dress? <laughs> I think the first thing is we dress in order to cover nakedness. It's a terrible thing to, for people to find you before you dress. Um, you feel very embarrassed and ashamed. And that started right from the Garden of Eden. So we dress in order to cover our nakedness. But I'm told also, we dress in order to impress. We are, and that's what one of the things that uh, Paul was teaching people, that that should not be the, their major priority, how, how people look at you. That you, your beauty should be inside. But the Bible does deal with these issues of what to put on, what to put on, about that inner beauty, in order to get inner beauty, whether in a marriage or in a relationship. There are things you put on, there are things you put off. And I think that's the message of um, Ephesians chapter 5. Verse 1 says, Follow God's example, therefore, as dearly loved children, and walk in the way of love, just as Christ loved us and gave himself up for us as a fragrant offering and sacrifice to God. But among you, there must not be even a hint of sexual immorality or of any kind of impurity or of greed, because these are improper for God's holy people. Nor should there be obs obscenity, foolish talk, or coarse joking, which are out of place, but other thanksgiving, for of this you can be sure, no immoral, impure, or greedy person, such a person is an idolater, has any inheritance in the kingdom of Christ and of God. Let no one deceive you with empty words, for because of such things, God's wrath comes on those who are disobedient. Therefore, do not be partners with them. Verse 8. For you are once darkness, but now you are light in the Lord. Live as children of light, for the fruit of the light consists in all goodness, righteousness, and truth. And find out what pleases the Lord. Have nothing to do with the fruitless deeds. Of darkness, but rather expose them. It is shameful even to mention what the disobedient do in secret, for everything exposes, exposed by the light becomes visible, and everything that is illuminated becomes a light. This is why it is said, Wake up, O sleeper, rise from the dead, and Christ will shine on you. Verse 15, be very careful then how you live, not as unwise, but as wise, making the most of every opportunity because the days are evil. Therefore, do not be foolish, but understand what the Lord's will is. Do not be get drunk on wine, which leads to debauchery. Instead, be filled with the Spirit, speaking to one another with psalms, hymns, and songs from the Spirit, sing and make music from your, from your heart to the Lord, always giving thanks to God the Father for everything in the name of our Lord Jesus Christ. And the passage goes on. So here, we are dressing for inner beauty. And there's a question of what you put on and what you put off. To have that inner beauty, there are things you must put off. And the passage you have read lists many, many of them. <laughs> Here, the word of God is saying, if you are going to have inner beauty, there must not even be a hint of sexual immorality. Hint of sexual immorality. Now, when it goes to the level, it's not just sexual immorality, but a hint of it. I think it's talking about the possibility that you do not have penetrative, penetrative sex 
but you are uh, dealing with each other in a way that is sexually arousing. That is a hint. Now, that's more than a hint of sexual immorality. Where you allow in what they call um, emotional infidelity. What is emotional infidelity? The fact that you, you are not sexually active with the, the other person's wife, but that's where you get your emotional support. You no longer get emotional support from your spouse, so you are trying to get it from another person's spouse or from a spouse of somebody else or from a girl who is not your wife or a man who is not your husband. That, you really can't say that they are, they are being sexually immoral, but there is a hint of immorality. And you are learning, if you truly want inner beauty, you must remove one cloth. Which one is? I, sexual immorality, including a hint of sexual immorality. So anybody who is careless on matters of uh, sex by what he sees, what he does, how he dresses, that is somebody who has no inner beauty. So when a girl is going in public with a dress that is too low from above and too high from below and uh, says, my dress, my choice, what does he want? What does she want? Obviously, she knows that if she is near men, including uh, people that she respects, they will be embarrassed. And if they are not embarrassed, the others will be looking at how, how they can put her to bed. And she's the one who is dressed in a way to provoke sexually. How would you provoke sexually and say you are not, you, you are not giving a hint of immorality? Although you may be a virgin, there is a hint of sexual immorality. We are learning, if you really are going to be described as one with inner beauty, you must remove that. The other thing that is listed here is greed. The passage talks about we must remove greed. What is greed? Three things. A person who wants what is not his, he can be described as being greedy. Because he has his, but he's trying to to take what is not his. And greed is rich, leads to corruption and theft. But number two, greed is the desire to covet, to go for things you have not earned yet. In other words, there's nothing wrong with being ambitious and looking for things, but if you want to get them the easy way, we think of you as being greedy, greedy. Of course, somebody also uses more than they should. It may be regarded as greedy. You eat, you give somebody food, they clear their food and go for more until the, the few people who have not yet eaten end up with no food. We regard them as greedy. We are learning, if you truly are going to be described as somebody with inner beauty, you must certainly not have greed. The third thing I see here is obscenity. And I don't know how how, how it relates with sexual immorality, but ob, an obscene person is a person who, who is going to say or do things that will be embarrassing or shameful. There's something else also listed here that you have to remove. Foolish talk. Some other version talk about coarse joking. And there are people like that. They keep calling every woman my darling. What a joke. When I discover finally that you have a wife and that girl in your office is not, uh, is not your wife. When you keep calling people something that uh, implies something else, I think it's foolish talking. It's also maybe regarded as coarse joking. If you want inner beauty, you have to be careful how you say, and that does not mean you cannot say something that lightens the moment. You can say things that will make people relaxed. But you can see, you can do so without the joke being dirty, without the joke 
being something that um, that is bringing uh, somebody's name into trouble. It's funny how the, um, the, 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 the there's a new culture where in order for people to laugh, you must make a joke about somebody. So here there are people enjoying themselves, laughing, but there's somebody who cannot go home. They may even commit suicide after your jokes and laughter. That is the kind of joking that's being said to be bad and must be stopped. Why can't you say something that does not embarrass anybody and you are not exploiting anybody's name? You are not making fun of anybody's tribe. You are simply saying something that is funny. So here we are learning you cannot have foolish talking or cause joking. It must be put away from, if that's only part of your vocabulary, if you want to be described as one with inner beauty, there must be something that you, you stop. But there's something also mentioned greatly here about idolatry. Here I'm thinking about um, doing things that give glory to other than God. And uh, you are learning, if you truly are a one in a beauty, that you only be one who is worshipped, God. So you cannot be having within a beauty, and you are having people that you worship, or you are having items you bow to, structures, statues, whatnot, that you bow to. Of course, sometimes the people argue that, but you know, they, they, I'm not bound to the statue. It reminded me of God. God is a spirit. He does not. He say, He has really commanded against having any physical representation of God. That means there is absolutely nothing on earth you can bow to. The cross, you can't bow to the cross. Because then you'd be contradicting the, the commandment. The commandment is saying, do not make a, a representation. I agree. The cross should remind you of Christ. But you are learning that Christ is a spirit. So you can't start bowing to a cross. So here idolatry is said to be something that we must put off, put off uh, from us. Then we will be said to be wearing inner beauty. And um, the other thing we are being taught is not to deceive ourselves. Um, and not have the company of uh, deceivers. Not not have the. Um, not only do, are we not to have foolish talking, we must not keep company with such people. Um, bad company, I think it can be called, because when you have company of deceivers, even if you're not a deceiver yourself, you will be mistaken for a deceiver. And so I, I think that's why we are being told this is something that we can, we can remove, that we should not have. I think there's also the question of drinking. You must put off. Do not get drunk on wine. You must put off any alcoholic um, drinking. Because how can you be drunk unless you drink? So you are learning that if you want to put off some of the things to put off, as by Ephesians chapter 5, it's the issues of drinking. Um, and I think that will be imp important. And instead of course joking, of course the other things you can say that will help you to honor God. I think the whole thing is put off darkness. Anything that's not transparent or clear, you come out of, come out of it. Do not follow it. But um, if you are, you are now naked, you have removed everything, so what do you put on for you to have inner beauty? Verse 2 is saying, walk in the way of love, just as Christ loved us and gave himself up for us as a fragrant offering and sacrifice to God. The first thing you must wear, put on, is love. That's what the verse is saying. Walk in the way of love. That means whoever is around you, they must know you love them. You appreciate them. 
That includes people who have hurt you. Includes people who hate you. You don't hate them in return. People with inner beauty are loving. And they don't just love selected few. They love anybody that God brings their way. And that will be something that you have to think about clearly. The way you relate with the people, do you, do you show them love? Do you act in love? What does it mean to act in love? It is to act only in ways that can benefit the other person. If you are self-centered, then you'll be acting in ways that benefit you. Loving people are other-centered, other than self-centered. They think about what is good for the other person and how the other person can actually benefit. That's what it means to love. It's not just to tell me, I love you. It's the way you act, the way you think, the way you talk shows that you care about me. Then you can say, so when the Bible is saying in Ephesians 5, 2, walk in the way of love. It's saying your behavior should be such that it is considerate of others and is seeking the very best for them. That what will be what we are talking about if we are talking about love. The other thing that this passage is saying you have to put on is sincerity, sincere talk. You cannot be somebody within a beauty and out of your talk I get an impression that turns out to be not true. You talk of yourself until I think, wow, that guy, he must be great in his place of work. But as a way, you are, creating an, you are creating an impression that's not true of reality. Then you are not being sincere. You do not quite tell a lie, but you leave me to, to make up my own mind and I make it badly because of the kind of the hints that you actually gave me then we can't say you are walking in sincerity. So you, you need to make sure that out of you or out of your communication, somebody cannot get the wrong picture, that they can get the truth out of your communication. So then we can say that guy is sincere. Whatever he says, even if it turns out to be wrong, he meant it. He can trust him because he is sincere. So that's what you put and when you put on love and then you put sincerity, you can see why people are attracted to you, why many people want to be your friends. Because with, with sincerity, they know they can trust you. They know when they ask you for a comment about anything, you are likely to, you are likely to end up um, telling him the bitter truth, but in a loving way, because you are sincere. And I think that will be something you have to ask yourself whether that, whether that is true of your daily walk and when you talk with friends and relatives. Verse 20 is, is continuing with the, with, the, with the same. Always giving thanks to God, the Father, for everything in the name of our Lord Jesus Christ. These people within a beauty are people with thanks. They never take anybody, anything or anybody for granted. They are always thanking people, appreciating them, and acknowledging the input of others, not giving the impression that they did everything to, alone when there is somebody who played a, a role. Um, so their talk, generally speaking, is appreciating others. You know, the opposite is grumbling, being cynical. Um, and always looking for what is wrong with anything. Instead of appreciating that even in the worst of situations, there's something good in it. And pointing it out, mentioning it, so that people don't not go out of balance. It doesn't mean you don't, since you are sincere, you tell somebody where well, things are wrong. But in the process, you also tell them what has gone well. So you have that spirit of appreciating or others and and giving, giving thanks. That's what you put on, the spirit of thankfulness, appreciating God and appreciating the people God uses to be a blessing to you and to make things easier for you. That's something that you have to ask yourself, is that something you do? The other thing I see in this passage is light. 
there's an issue of light and darkness. And they are saying, anybody who wants this sincere inner beauty, walk in the light. If you walk in the light, it means you don't do things that are, that are hidden, that are going to disappoint people at a later time. You do not uh, play games with people. You walk in the light means you talk openly and clearly about what is happening. And I think that will be that will be important. But dark, darkness is what encourages you to do wrong things, to undermine others, and um, to put your hand in the cookie. You know, you you look like you are smiling, but Kumbe, you are taking away some things from me. That is really part of darkness. People who walk in the light, you know what they are doing. They are willing to acknowledge their responsibility and be held accountable because they walk in the light. Then verse 15 is talking about wisdom. Be very careful then how you live, not as unwise, but as wise. In other words, think before you leap. You don't just live your life wah, without, without clarity. You, if you truly are uh, uh, the person you should be, and you are the person who is loving, sincere, appreciative, walking in the light, what means that you are also, in, a, in addition, walking in wisdom, means that you always think clearly and analyze, analyze situations before acting, so that even if you got it wrong, somebody will see you had thought through whatever it is that you, you are doing or wanted done. That is walking in wisdom, which will be something that is, uh, that is important. So be very careful. People that are wise are careful. They don't just act to discover they acted wrongly. They are careful. And they are careful how they live. You know, it is saying that the way you can act that it can be regarded as unwise. There's a way you can act and regard it as wise. And you're saying people within a beauty who have wisdom as their clothing. I think the other thing that's mentioned here is to be careful how you use your time. Because these are evil days. Time management. You know, the people within a beauty are so organized that they, when they tell you they are going to meet you at 10, they meet you at 10 because they have clearly organized their time. And um, they have a diary, they keep, they know not to be quick to commit themselves. You know, there are people who really commit themselves on, oh, sorry, 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 I had not checked my diary. Oh, sorry, sorry, sorry. You know, I didn't come because this, and I had already promised my grandmother a visitor. Now, why didn't you seek time before making a commitment? Why didn't you seek, give me time, let me look at this. Those people who are wise are good in time management. They are careful how they use their time. I think, and I think that will be that is an important thing for you to to think about with wisdom in time management. I think the other thing I see here is you do not follow your will, you follow God's will. You know the Son of God had a will as a human being. Yet he told his father, remove this cup from me. Yet not my will, but yours. People who, are, uh, who have inner beauty do not command situations. They seek God's intervention in situations. They believe God for the change of situations. They do not believe they have power of their own. So they go to God for his will. And actually want his will and his will alone to be the one that will be operational in their lives and in their businesses and in their careers. And that, that will be something that you need to think about. The other thing I see referred to here is the issue of addiction. That uh, if you are wise, you will not allow anything to control you. Whether it's alcohol, what is uh, watching so, soap operas in, on TV, 
No, 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 no. There is nothing that's allowed. You should not be doing anything because you must. You must do something because it's good to do. Even if it's a good thing, like visiting your girlfriend, you can be addicted such that when you are supposed to be studying, you are going to visit your girlfriend. That means you are becoming addicted to that relationship. And uh, it's wrong. People within a beauty are not out of control. They do not allow substance to substance abuse to be the one to control them. They are careful. They are not addicted to anything. Instead, they wear the Holy Spirit. They are full of the Spirit of God. And so they live life that's going to be pleasing to the Spirit because they are led of the Spirit. I think in Galatians 5.22, we say they have the fruit of the Spirit in their life. And many of the things we are saying they should put on are actually things that show they, they are full of the Spirit of God. But here the issue, the emphasis is they are full of the Spirit of God. And I think that's a, that will be something you need to ask yourself whether that's the way you live. You allow the Spirit of God to lead you, to guide you, to direct you. Or you allow the devil to control you or self to be the one that controls you. So, I, so the recommendation here is put on the Holy Spirit. Be filled with him. But there's something else they are saying in verse 19. Speaking to one another with the psalms, hymns, and songs from the Spirit. Sing and make music from your heart to the Lord. People with inner, inner beauty sing not to please people, not to entertain people. They sing. Here the, the Word of God is saying they need to sing from the heart, make music from the heart, and make it to the Lord, not just for people to hear, but for Christ to hear. So that it's a way of worship. And I think that will be... So that's what you put on. A, a person who is who has inner beauty clearly talks and behaves in a way that honors God and he sings God's praises. And I think that will be, that will be important. So singing is one of the things that, um, that one is encouraged to do by this passage, and it's something that you have to think about. Is it right to, re to sing a chorus and repeat the same word a hundred times in one meeting? <laughs> Those are things that you have to raise. Is that part of what we are being told to make melody, to sing from the heart? And of course, finally, there is the issue of submission. Verse 19 has said it, and it's important to understand that it will, it will, it will help you, if you, depending on what you, you do. But this whole, whole idea about submission, it is yielding, giving way. Don't fight continuously. Don't insist on your way. Why can't you yield so that better the person with more agents or whatever can pass Many collisions in relationships has to do with everybody insisting on their way. Submission is willingness to allow the other person to pass. You can be assertive and submissive at the same time. So you will be doing things that bring honor and glory to God. So can you see here then that when you, when you are talking about having inner beauty, there are things to put off, but there are also things to put on. Final result, you are, you, you are pers your person will be something attractive to the people around you, will be something that brings glory to God. And um, it will help everybody who are around you to honor God and to appreciate you. May the Lord help us to do things in such a way that we truly make other people find it easy to deal with us, that they don't describe us as difficult, 
but they describe us as people who made their day. That when I'm with so-and-so, I feel blessed, I feel encouraged, I feel more productive. 